Chapter 4, The Tablet as Ohm's Law. The Tablet of Shamash is broken into three distinct zones. The people locked in the box that make up the throne, the iron fist and the clenched hand all represent resistance. It is important to also note that Shamash is the only person with his feet on solid ground. He is grounded in the reality of the physical plane. The people doing the heavy lifting to get the idol off the ground represent the need to act. That activity also represents current. The final group contains one person maintaining stability. A second, the architect or planner overseeing the project. And a third person who is an appreciative spectator applauding the goal being realised. Realising a goal is a new potential difference made manifest. Additionally, each of the three people are three different heights going from shortest to tallest. They are literally a scale of potential difference. In modern physics, we know that the variables of resistance, current and potential difference are all governed by Ohm's law. If you happen to have stumbled across this book, it is book one of a three-book series called Touched by the Light. SeniorThinkTank.ca has created this series to explain how Ohm's law of resistance applies to every aspect of your experience. For more information on this, please enjoy our other two series. The Common Human Experience, three volumes of original research, available at SeniorThinkTank.ca and Become the Light, the nine-volume encyclopedia of examples of the influence Ohm's law has over your life. It is available at ohmslaw.ca. All other titles are available at seniorthinktank.ca. To explain how Ohm's law is represented on the tablet of Shamash, Jason Volthausen, the creator of ohmslaw.ca, will guide you through the rest of this chapter. The entire concept that there must be a first principle that everything is emanating from is very old and appears across all cultures. The ancient Greeks called this concept logos. However, because they could not find an actual formula that fit the criteria logos demanded, logos eventually gets downgraded from the divine animating principle all things are coming from to the logic behind an argument or reason. However, the concept of logos goes far beyond basic reasoning. It in fact goes back to a literal divine animating principle that they were attempting to find, but could not. When George Simon Ohm first published his Law of Resistance in 1827, he intended for it to be applied to other fields of study other than electricity. In fact, the only reason he applied it to electricity at all was because it was the field of study with the least amount of competition for explanations. He states this fact explicitly in the preface of his book, The Galvanic Circuit Investigated Mathematically. After his theory was proven true, society became so enamored with all the technological wonders electricity brought that his original hypothesis, just like the Tablet of Shamash, was lost and forgotten. To make Ohm's Law simpler to understand, in the Become the Light Encyclopedia of Books, we created a visual code to explain how it works. We call this visual code the Wheels of Life. You will find here a quick review of Ohm's Law, after which we will demonstrate the same results of the formula hidden within the image on the tablet. The triangle pointing down equals resistance. The three waves equal current. The triangle pointing up equals potential difference. This section is the only thing you must memorize. Know it forward and backward. It is the foundation of everything. Phase one is the resistance phase and it has two parts. If resistance is constant, it is the variable that does not move. When current decreases or goes down, potential difference also decreases or goes down. If resistance is constant, when current increases or goes up, potential difference must also increase or go up. 
The second phase of the formula is the phase of current. If current is constant, it is the variable that does not change. When resistance decreases or goes down, potential difference must also decrease or go down. When current is constant, it is the variable that does not move. When resistance increases or goes up, potential difference must also increase or go up. The third and final stage of Ohm's law is the stage of potential difference. If potential difference is constant, when current increases or goes up, resistance must decrease or go down. If potential difference is constant and is the variable that does not move, in this phase, when current decreases or is going down, resistance must be increasing or going up. Once again, when these three phases are put together in a diagram, ohmslaw.ca calls this the wheels of life. Now let's take a closer look at the symbol on Shamash's shield, the thing everyone on the tablet is paying respect to. It is the image they are worshipping, Shamash's gift to the world. It is the reason they are following his belief instead of the former solar and lunar cults. The solid circle in the middle of the symbol on the shield is the thickest or hardest part of the equation, resistance. The triangles going out from the center to the edge are establishing the potential difference in each direction. Note that the outer edge is not thick like the circle in the center. It is barely defined, which means it can fluctuate. Where the resistance circle meets the potential difference triangles, waves of current are being released. Let us assume for a moment that the tablet is like a snapshot, a single moment in time captured. Let us call this instant moment zero, the key or primer. What would the image on the idol look like if it were to pass through the phases of Ohm's law? In the resistance phase, if resistance is constant and current increases, potential difference must increase. When the center of the shield stays the same size, if current goes up, the shield must grow. If resistance is constant and current decreases, potential difference must also decrease. When the center of the shield stays the same size, if the current goes down, the shield must shrink. If current is constant and resistance increases, potential difference must also increase. When the current on the shield stays the same size, if the center gets bigger, the shield must once again grow. If current is constant and resistance decreases, potential difference must also decrease. When the current on the shield stays the same size, if the center gets smaller, the shield will shrink. If potential difference is constant and current increases, resistance decreases. When the outer edge of the shield is fixed, if the center gets smaller, it is because current has increased. And finally, if potential difference is constant and current decreases, resistance must increase. Which means, when the outer edge of the shield is fixed, if the current gets smaller, it is because the resistance in the center has grown. When viewed as was just demonstrated, the image on the idol of the Tablet of Shamash is actually the most accurate non-mathematical way to explain Ohm's formula ever devised. Symbolically, the only way it could be better is if the solid ring in the middle were a square, the most resistant shape, but aesthetically that just wouldn't work as well. Shamash, as the sun god, through the symbol of a shield, wants first to protect you. Secondly, it wants followers of his knowledge to realize their potential. Shamash's gift to the world, the image on his shield, is the formula required to do so. It is a step-by-step -step guide of the variables and circumstance you must create in order to grow. The goal is to master the formula, which in turn manifests the largest possible shield of protection you can have over the direction your life takes.
Centuries later, a similar symbol would be created that, though most followers are unaware of it, works just like the primer found on Shamash's shield. In Taoism, the law appears as the symbol yin-yang. Founded in 6th century China, Tao means the way, path, or principle. It is the source of, or motive force, behind everything that exists. Most people only know it in its resting state of balance. However, it actually changes form as it moves through the process of creation. Movement and stillness. Energy in two states of acceleration. The solid center slows down, condenses, and becomes still. The outside is in continuous motion, accelerating from the center to the outer edge. If resistance, the center, is constant, the more potential you have, the bigger a wave you make, and the faster you rise above the resistance. Building and storing. Energy in two states, opposition and struggle. Separately building and storing power, yet remaining connected and unified. When in a state of constant action, the greater the struggle or resistance, the more knowledge you are forced to learn and store. Balance and Harmony Energy as it appears in a state of harmony and balance, both poles evenly melding into one another, mutually supporting each other's distinct forces and attributes. Constant potential is reached when the individual accepts that struggle is the mechanism through which growth occurs. All creative and destructive actions are the result of polarity in different phases. In that belief system, it is through meditation that the way is revealed. The individual learns that, through the state of mental stillness, thoughts can be regulated. Once this ability has been established, even outside the meditative state, though emotions continue to drive actions, pursuing every thought impulse becomes an absolute choice. As was stated earlier, the symbol on Shamash's shield primarily symbolizes polarity in its balanced state. It is 50% of Inanna's eight-pointed star, the feminine, and 50% of Utu's eight bands of rays, which is the masculine. Inanna and Utu are ancient Mesopotamian god twins, two parts of one. Inanna is the queen of heaven and the night. Utu is the sun, god of justice, morality, and truth. Our moment zero primer is also the instant of perfect balance or harmony between the potential differences of the masculine and feminine aspects of the principle, exactly like the yin-yang symbol. It is important to keep in mind that the Tablet of Shamash is actually the Tablet of Shamash and the Law. The message of Shamash, as the bearer of the Law, is literally the first principle from which all things are manifest. He has come to share it so that his followers can understand why everything is unfolding the way it is. You can't succeed in life until you know the rules. Without the law as a guide, you spend your life in the dark. Shamash is the light that illuminates the way nature obligates one to live so that they may grow. The law is all that physically is and all that can ever be.